from the selfish path to romance. Download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com. What am I going to do? I think about sex all the time. Sex. Help. Four times five is 30. Five times six is 32. Naked girls. Naked women. Oh, stop me. God, Xander, is that all you think about? And that's from Buffy. Ah, the male mind. Think about it. It works overtime. The male mind can see beauty and sexiness where a woman sees what? Pudginess, repulsiveness? One 29-year-old man looks upon his girlfriend and he loves the extra bulk in her breasts and on her backside and he thinks, wow, she's hot and he wants some intimacy. And her? Well, she just had a baby a few months ago. She looks in the mirror and she doesn't see the same boy, the woman that her boyfriend sees. She feels fat, ugly, stressed, and depressed. And I even suspect she feels really angry at him. And one sex-starved man asks me, what can I do? So I'll help him coming up. And you walk into a hospital, a cardiac unit, and you do a double take. Out of the corner of your eyes, you see something crawling. It looks like a coyote or something is roaming the halls. Are you imagining things? Well, possibly not. It may not be a coyote. In fact, I'm sure it won't be. But it could be a dog or a cat or a hedgehog. Is this crazy? Is this lunacy? Right now I'm looking at an Associated Press article that says dog lowers anxiety among heart patients. Now, why would anyone bring a potentially germ-carrying pet into a hospital or a nursing home or a hospice center or other places, especially when one person's pet to another person is what? A feared animal or a pesky nuisance? But it is happening. Pet-assisted therapy is the new kid on the block in therapy, and only very specially trained animals are used, and the stories are of success are fun to hear. And I think of my mother-in-law being in a nursing home after a stroke, and she just resigned. She just gave in. She didn't want any more physical therapy. She didn't want any more therapy to see if she could get some more of her speech back. But she used to have a dog she loved. And I'll bet if they brought a little dog that looked like her little dog in and it helped her, worked with her, I'll bet she would have been far more motivated to have tried to make the best of her remaining years. Later in the show, we'll be talking with Pearl Saletto, who is an expert in the field of pet-assisted therapy. I'm Dr. Ellen Kenner. I'm a clinical psychologist, and my show is The Rational Basis of Happiness. And even though it's not therapy, it's I am a clinical psychologist, so I do do therapy all the time. It's an opportunity for you to get some free advice. You can pick up the phone right now and give me a call. My number is toll free one eight seven seven Dr. Kenner. That's toll free one eight seven seven D R K E N N E R. And you can also visit my website drkenner.com. Now, here's the email I received from the sex-starved man. Dear Dr. Kenner, I'm 29 years old, and I've been with my girlfriend, Tammy, for two years. She gave birth to our first child seven months ago. She put on some weight, especially in the backside and breast area, and in my male mind, she looks great, very sexually attractive. In her mind, she's overweight and unbecoming. She feels depressed. And she complains about her looks. She's breaking out on her face. She's been very stressed out. She's working again. She complains about her body all day, about not being able to fit into her old clothes anymore. I strive to be empathic. I find myself becoming frustrated with her because I'm longing for sex. And she's never in the mood. If I give her a compliment or try to become intimate, she ends up responding so negatively about herself that... I don't even want to share those types of thoughts anymore, although I do. I find myself aroused a lot, and I want to have sexual relations with her often. But due to her moods and her beliefs about herself, I'm left by myself with these longings. What can we do? Aaron. Aaron, 
I suspect that Tammy's genuinely upset about her weight, and I think that's only the tip of the iceberg. I think there are deeper issues. You mentioned that she's depressed and stressed out and anxious. That means she's dealing with losses, with being overwhelmed, with uncertainties. Those those refer to what some people call postpartum depression. Uh, The arrival of a child dramatically changes the landscape in a couple's life in ways that you normally don't anticipate. So what you both need is very good communication. If she's bottled up and not sharing her resentments or her concerns with you, or if you don't know how to actively listen and all you guys talk about is, I want some sex, you look hot, and she says, I look ugly, I don't want sex, then you are in an endless loop. And what's going to break this loop? Well, I think that you've you've got to be able to listen to her, to what's really going on underneath her complaining about her weight. I think that's just the surface level. Here's a sample of some possible resentments that Tammy may be feeling. All he's interested in is sex. I feel used. He doesn't care about me. It's all about him and satisfying his needs. I'm never in the mood for sex anymore, not with him. I'm angry with him, and I also feel guilty that I no longer feel romantic. Why doesn't he help me out more? I do most of the parenting, and I work, and I'm stressed out all the time. I never have a moment to myself, and all he does is look at me longingly, and I feel guilty, and he badges me for sex. She may also be thinking some of the other things, Aaron. Why did he never ask me to marry him? I mean, this girlfriend bit I don't like. I never wanted a child out of wedlock, and he wants it both ways. He wants me, but without a permanent commitment. Well, you think I want sex with him? No way. Or she may even be having some thoughts that are pretty sad for the two of you. I don't think he's my perfect partner, and now I've got a kid with him. I'm trapped. Or she might be thinking, I don't like being a mom. I miss my freedom, but Aaron wouldn't let me get an abortion. I feel so angry with him and so guilty all the time. So look at all, look at the range of types of issues that you're not dealing with. If you just talk about her weight and your sex issue, you never get to the uh, to key issues underneath that. So what are the solutions? You need to gain perspective. Um, as I said, if she had a child against her will, that's really sad, and she'll need some some therapy for that. If that's not the case, then you need to be a very good listener. In the book, The Good Marriage, Judith Wallerstein and Sarah Blakesley talk about what it's like have, well, right after you have the birth of a child. She said it's all too easy for the marital relationship, in your case the partnership, to erode when children take center stage. The couple's sex life may decline for several years after the birth of a child, but parents who become entirely absorbed in child-rearing have emotionally abandoned each other and the marriage, leaving two hungry people whose adult needs are not being met. When we get back, I'll talk a little bit more about this. I'll take your calls and questions toll-free, 1-877-DR. Kenner. I'm a clinical psychologist, so anything that's keeping you awake at night, family, friends, work, yourself, you can give me a call about toll-free, 1-877-DR. Kenner, D-R-K-E-N-N-E-R, on the rational basis of happiness. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance, the serious romance guidebook by clinical psychologist Dr. Ellen Kenner and co-author Dr. Edwin Locke. Romantic partners need to communicate constantly, but about what? The possibilities are endless. Be creative, revealing things about yourself, your likes and dislikes, your attitudes and values can be very effective. Tell your partner what you like, such as, boy, do I appreciate it when I come home late and I smell dinner cooking. Thanks. Or, I love the way you look in that suit. If you don't like something your partner does, communicate this in a positive way. For example, sweetheart, I enjoy making love with you most when you've just showered and your breath is fresh. You can download Chapter 1 for free by going to drkenner.com. And you can buy The Selfish Path to Romance at amazon.com. <laughs> 